don't own much gear outside of this. I have a couple more synths at home, but <clears throat> I'm not a gear freak. I'm a musician who wants to make music, and that's why I'm here. When I play live, I do MIDI synchronization. So this is to explain that all my machines are routed together. When I press play on this device, which is my brain, I call it a brain, you get to play 16 voice. So it can be like you can thinking at, as 16 instruments, 16 sound, 16 people. If you come <coughs> from a band background, you have 16 players. In all individual players get their own effect here. I think it's wonderful for me because it's so easy to um, program. Electron seems very complicated. I'm not the kind of person who reads a manual. So if you're an inst intuitive player, I really recommend this. What I like to do when I compose my albums, I like to um, start with this one. I will use uh, percussion from this one, and I always double with a 707. So I bought the same, I bought the sampler to reload all my 707 drums because what I use in my music is most of the time in my dance music, it's uh, percussions from the Electribe 2 combined with a 707 because I like the I like the warmth in the 707, it feels real. It was made to imitate a drummer. It also feels like techno, you know, you hear a 707 in Chicago or Detroit, I like that. But I like to combine like often two kicks or like two claps, two snares. So this is a sampler where I sample my 707 drum machine, especially for my touring. And then I realized having a sampler that it was amazing that I could actually load 909 and sound effect and, uh, <clears throat> and, and sound from my album that I cannot play live because they come from overdub. Everything is routed through MIDI except this one. Unfortunately, it doesn't sync MIDI. It's a Zoom R16, <laughs> it's a multi tracker. When I started making solo music six years ago, I went to a shop in Montreal called Moog Audio and I said, can I, do you have a R16? Can I get the R16, please? <laughs> and the guys, they started laughing and they said, are you gonna buy that piece of shit? <laughs> and I said, yes. <coughs> and in my head, I just thought, just watch me. <laughs> I did my two first album with this, no computer. You have 16 channel. You only get eight faders, unfortunately. It's like an eight track, basically. It imitates the old, uh, tape deck, it tracks. Since this doesn't connect MIDI, I use it more for um, pad, soundscape, sound effect. I, I loop my vocals. And also sometimes, I will say it, I'm not shy about it, I cheat. When I do a song where I sing a lot, you probably know this when I play live, I'm really in a machine and somehow at some point, I'm not there anymore. I'm singing, but the music is playing. It's backing tracks. I have no shame at all to say that for two songs in my set, when I really engage with the mic and with my crowd also, I, want, I come from a band background, punk background, so I like to engage with the crowd. I just press play and my playback is playing and it sounds great because I've mastered, I ask a friend to master it, knowing that this is 24 bits and we arranged that it would sound good in a club, even if it's quite cheap device. I'm very sentimental about this piece of equipment because this is the this is the the instrument that made me decide to make electronic music. It's the first sequencer I got and when I when I started sequencing my life changed <laughs> completely. I used to play violin and I don't anymore. Um, it's a chord mono tribe. Unfortunately they don't do it at the moment they stop but I really hope they bring it back. This is a sequence I made last night. How it works, it's really, really easy. Also, it's very intuitive, that's why I like it. You have a ribbon here, and you have six octaves, so you can go pretty low. So it has a wide range, and then you have three waveforms typical waveforms, 
and then you have a filter. I really like the filter of the Monotrab. It's the same filter as the MS-20, which is legendary, but it's on a much smaller device. So if you're touring and you have already synths and you don't, ha you don't own an MS-20, it's, it's really nice. And actually, I like the feel of it better than on the MS-20. So that's that. And then finally here I have a, a, a synthesizer. It's called a Mini Brood. I'm sure a lot of you heard about this. I use it for my bass line. Sometimes I do high pitch sequence too. I mostly use it only sequence because I, I'm not a player. I'm not a key player and I like to sequence. And do you usually use the mixer? In in the venue? Or yes, oh yeah, also this is not mine, <laughs> this is Red Bull. I, I uh, ask for a mixer every gig that I do. That's a bit stressful because you, I had to learn how to get used to different sounds, different parameters. Sometimes it's stressful. I'm not shy to ask the sound technician where I'm like, oh, I don't know this mixer, how do you this and that. For me, there's no such thing as like pride and like wanting to show that you, you've got your shit together. When you're touring, what's important is the show that you do for the people in the room, not trying to look pro. I looked unprofessional. I looked like a debutant all the time on my sound check. Mm -hmm. I don't care because I know that when I'm gonna play, it's gonna work and then people are gonna take me seriously, which is all that matters, right? Sound check is just a sound check. Also, the secret is to practice a lot. If you wanna play live, only gear, hardware, get the computer out, it's just play every day. I practice every day. When I go on tour, I practice every day for two months, one month and a half. And sometimes I'll do it just one, one, one time a day, five times, but it, it becomes muscle memory. So last part of my set setup is the vocal mic. Hi, here. Um, hi, my name is Marie. Uh, it's a very important part of my setup because I guess that's what makes it unique is to go out there in a club and talk to people. Not much, not much people do, but some people do. And every time I see it, I, I feel it. It's amazing, it really stands out and people love to be addressed, even, especially when they're in the dark. <laughs> and it's nice to, I find also that when someone is there with a microphone or whatever, sometimes it's just a DJ also, just putting a track with a, with a vocal mantra or a sample from a politician or you know, you, you've heard those tracks, the techno tracks, the house tracks. It brings people together, it really does. And when people are like out there in the crowd, <clears throat> in the dark, tripping, whatever, or not, <laughs> having a bad time also, <laughs> it helps people to suddenly all come together because there's a voice. And that's what I try to do with my music. I'll give you an, ex an example of what I do with my vocals when I play live. I like to talk to people, but when I talk to people, I need, I need it to be real, you know, I need it to feel it, otherwise I feel people won't, won't engage. So um, anybody can get on the vocal mic, really, you don't have to be a singer, you just have to be confident in what you're saying. You can say orange juice in a really sexy way. <laughs> yes, it's possible. So I'm going to play you a song that talks about my life and my work.
work for 